Baltimore County students and families. I'm just so glad that you've been able to join us again for another read aloud. Today, we're reading some select poems by Shel Silverstein. During the read aloud, listen for different literary elements such as metaphors, personification, alliterations, and any other figurative language examples throughout Silverstein's poems. After you listen to these poems, we'll ask you some questions to think about and talk about with someone at home. Next, you'll see a few writing prompts presented about the poems. Choose one, two, or all three prompts to write about. You can even share those writings with your teacher. Finally, we'll share a few ideas for how to extend and enrich your learning and just have some fun. I hope you enjoy these select poems by Shel Silverstein. Enjoy. I am so excited to have you join me for today's reading of Selected Poems from Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. Special thanks to HarperCollins Children's Books for giving us permission to share these selected poems from the book with you today. This week, you have been reading poetry and looking at a variety of literary elements that poets use to help the reader picture details and make meaning. As we read these poems today, let's see if we can spot any of these literary elements hiding out in Shel Silverstein's poems. Invitation. If you are a dreamer, come in. If you are a dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer. If you're a pretender, come sit by my fire, for we have some flax golden tails to spin. Come in, come in. This is the first poem in the book. Why do you think Shel Silverstein begins the book with this poem? The poem is called Invitation, and I think it's meant as an invitation to read the book. I love that he calls it an invitation as opposed to an introduction, because the word invitation makes me think of being invited to a party or an event. Maybe he wants us to think of reading this book as going to a party. After reading this invitation, what types of poems do you predict will be in this book? I am predicting there might be some narrative poems because he mentions some flax golden tales to spin. I'm also predicting some imaginative poems because of who he is inviting to read. A dreamer, a wisher, a liar, a hoper, a prayer, a magic bean buyer, a pretender. These are all people with imagination. Let's keep reading to see if our predictions are accurate. Listen to the mustn'ts. Listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never haves. Then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. What is the speaker's point of view in this poem? The speaker is telling the reader that they should listen to the people who tell them they can't do things because anything can happen. I think the speaker wants the reader to do things that they are being told are impossible or never have happened. Look at the poet's use of words in all capital letters. How does the choice of words to place in all capital letters support the speaker's point of view? All of those negative words are capitalized mustn'ts, don'ts, shouldn'ts, impossibles, won'ts, never haves. And then he capitalizes anything. I think he is doing that to highlight the contrast between these two ideas. This supports the speaker's point of view of rejecting the impossible with the word anything in all capital letters in that last line of the poem. Two boxes. Two boxes met upon the road, said one unto the other, if you're a box and I'm a box, then you must be my brother. Our sides are thin, we're caving in, and we must get no thinner. And so two boxes, hand in hand, went home to have their dinner. 
Sleeping Sardines. I'm tired of eating just beans, says I, so I opened a can of sardines. But they started to squeak. Hey, we're trying to sleep. We were snuggled up tight till you let in the light. You big silly sap, let us finish our nap. Now close up the lid. So that's what I did. Will somebody please pass the beans? What examples of personification can you find in this poem? The sardines in the poem act like people. They say, hey, we're trying to sleep. What effect does personification have on this poem? I think it adds humor for sure. Look at the ending. Will someone please pass the beans? I feel like Shel Silverstein often closes his poems with a punchline, almost as though he's telling a joke. At the beginning of the poem, the speaker is saying they're tired of beans, but then after dealing with this crazy can of personified sardines, they decide beans are just fine after all. Lazy Jane. Lazy, 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 lazy Jane. She wants a drink of water, so she waits and waits and waits and waits and waits for it to rain. How does the poem use the space on the page to add meaning? Well, this poem is about a little girl who is lazy and wants a drink of water, but doesn't want to get it, so she waits for the rain to drop in her mouth. The words are arranged on the page so that they look like raindrops dropping into Lazy Jane's mouth. Do you see it? What a brilliant way to use the shape of the poem to add to the meaning. If the world was crazy. If the world was crazy, you know what I'd eat? a big slice of soup and a whole quart of meat, a lemonade sandwich, and then I might try some roasted ice cream or a bicycle pie, a nice notebook salad, an underwear roast, an omelet of hats and some crisp cardboard toast, a thick malted milk made from pencils and daisies, and that's what I'd eat if the world was crazy. If the world was crazy, you know what I'd wear? a chocolate suit, and a tie of eclair, some marshmallow earmuffs, some licorice shoes, and I'd read a paper of peppermint news. I'd call the boys Susie, and I'd call the girls Harry. I'd talk through my ears, and I always would carry a paper umbrella for when it gets hazy, to keep in the rain if the world was crazy. If the world was crazy, you know what I'd do? I'd walk on the ocean and swim in my shoe. I'd fly through the ground and I'd skip through the air. I'd run down the bathtub and bathe on the stair. When I met somebody, I'd say, goodbye, Joe. And when I was leaving, then I'd say, hello. And the greatest of men would be silly and lazy. So I would be king if the world was crazy. Forgotten language. Once, I spoke the language of the flowers. Once, I understood each word the caterpillar said. Once, I smiled in secret at the gossip of the starlings and shared a conversation with the housefly in my bed. Once, I heard and answered all the questions of the crickets and joined the crying of each falling, dying flake of snow. Once, I spoke the language of the flowers. How did it go? How did it go? Where the sidewalk ends. There is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins. And there the grass grows soft and white. And there the sun burns crimson bright. And there the moon bird rests from his flight to cool in the peppermint wind. Let us leave this place where the smoke blows black and the dark street winds and bends, past the pits where the asphalt flowers grow. We shall walk with a walk that is measured and slow and watch where the chalk white arrows go to the place where the sidewalk ends. Yes, we'll walk with a walk that is measured and slow 
and will go where the chalk white arrows go. For the children they mark, and the children they know, the place where the sidewalk ends. I wanted to end our reading today with the title poem. This poem actually falls right in the middle of the book on page 63. Why do you think the author placed this poem right in the middle? What figurative language does the poet use in this poem? How does it help the reader picture details or understand meaning? Didn't you find a metaphor? I found one, peppermint wind. I think that means that it's a cool, crisp wind. The author also uses a lot of descriptive language and some alliteration. Smoke blows black. Watch where. Shel Silverstein also uses a lot of repetition in his poems. Now that I think about it, a lot of these literary devices were used throughout all of the poems we read today, and they add to the meaning, the rhythm, and help you picture all of those details. We hope you enjoyed this read aloud. Check out Where the Sidewalk Ends to read all of the poems in this book. Now that you've listened to these poems, let's talk about it. You can pause your screen at any time to take as much time as you need for each question. In the poem, Listen to the Mustn'ts, Shel Silverstream strategically uses uppercase letters to send the reader a message about his point of view. How would the poem be different if he didn't use all capital letters on those words at all? How are the two poems, Two Boxes and Sleeping Sardines, similar? What type of literary element do they both use? Which was your favorite poem from today's reading? Why was it your favorite? Now it's your turn to write about it. In the poem, If the World Was Crazy, Shel Silverstein mixes up ways to eat food, clothing options, and crazy ways to say or do something. Write your own version of If the World Was Crazy and mix up your own food, clothing, sayings, or things to do. The poem, Lazy Jane, is written as a shape poem. Write your own shape poem. Try to include alliteration where multiple words begin with the same sound. In the poem, Two Boxes, Silverstein uses personification to give the boxes human characteristics. Write the next verse of the poem. Try to include details about what and how the boxes ate for dinner. Now it's time to have some fun. You can choose from any of the following activities. Collect a stack of magazines, newspapers, or pamphlets, flyers to look through along with a pair of scissors. Cut out words and phrases you like and then arrange them into a brand new poetic masterpiece. Ask a family member or two to compete in a poetry off, similar to a dance off or a sing off. Each person creates a poem and they perform it against each other. Decide whose poem was best. You can even do this through Google Meets with your teacher or fellow students. Just be sure to get permission first. Find a poem you really enjoy. Create some props for that poem. For example, if you chose Silverstein's poem, Forgotten Language, you could make flowers, snowflakes, and insects. Record yourself reading the poem while using the props to create a video that you can share with your teacher, family, or friends. We hope you really enjoyed these poems by Shel Silverstein today. Please take care of yourself. We miss you, and we really hope to see you soon.